So this week has been a pretty big week for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Not only did the game receive a huge patch in the form of Sim Update 4, the Sobo Studio and Microsoft conducted a new Q&A, giving insight into the development process and what we can expect to see over the coming months. So let's jump in and take a look. Starting with Sim Update 4 then, there were a whole load of things that were added and the patch notes were very extensive. Additionally, Sobo touched on a few points in the recent Q&A, so first up, let's take a look at the parts that are relevant to a Sim Update 4. The flight model continues to be refined. It's still not perfect, far from it in some areas, I don't think anyone would argue against that. The Sobo will add in plenty of fixes and updates as they go. The latest changes are to the Cessna 152, 172 and the three turboprops. For these, the rudder and elevator simulation has been improved, moving them closer to reality. Sobo are keen to point out that work on this will continue over time. As a case in point, the Aerolon drag will be improved for Sim Update 5. Not only will this be improved, but it will also be opened up to the SDK. This means that aircraft creators will be able to define Aerolon drag for themselves, which is something that at this moment they cannot do. Icing is something that has long needed improving. For Sim Update 4, the code for icing calculations has been completely refactored. Previously, it was too aggressive, so this has now been reduced. This will affect not only the behavior of the plane, but also the visuals. Another important change that I know a lot of people wanted to see is improvements to ATC. For Sim Update 4 then, there's been some changes to ATC phraseology some of which you can see on the screen right now. And let's just have a look at a few of these. Starting at the top, keep your speed below has been changed to not above. Ready for takeoff calls have been changed to ready for departure. Is going missed, changed to going around and so on. Uh, copy, copy that, replaced by Roger. So again, bringing the process up to date a little bit. Now moving on to weather. Pressure temperature was originally planned for Sim Update 4, and this had been planned as far back as February of this year. However, there were some problems in testing for this, so it has now been pushed back to the next Sim Update. Trees have been seen, uh, seen some changes in the latest update. Tree coverage in a flight simulator almost became a meme at one point. Many of you will uh, probably remember that back in the early days. Uh, that was simply because of trees being in unusual locations, but also being very oversized as well. Some of this is still going on. You only have to fly over New York to see that, but it's also in other places. But that said, some of it has also been fixed. The main issue then is that all trees have been rescaled. They're now no longer super large. The issue when making this change, however, was that reducing a tree's size would also reduce tree coverage, meaning that uh, well, basically you'd see a lot of ground through the trees. And also, because the trees were smaller, they couldn't be seen into the distance. So Sobo have overcome both of these issues. With Sim Update 4, tree sizes have been reduced to the correct sizes. However, they've managed to maintain the same level of coverage and draw distance. You can see a side-by-side -side comparison video here highlighting exactly that. Also, a future update will enable a few new graphics options that will allow the visuals in the distance to be set higher than their current max settings, so a draw distance effectively. An option to toast your PC then. The Garmin G1000 and G3000 systems have been the target of a huge overhaul for many months. Initially, Microsoft's feedback snapshot stated that the first phase of the Garmin update would arrive with Sim Update 3. When that didn't happen, the feedback snapshot instead pointed out that it would be the first phase of the Garmin update arriving in Sim Update 4. Unfortunately, it seems that the release window has once again been missed. The current feedback snapshot shows the Garmin update starting with Sim Update 5 and continuing into Sim Updates 6 and 7. Overall, this makes the feedback snapshot feel a little on the useless side, at least for the Garmin thing specifically, as it's clearly not accurate. But then again, release dates do get missed. When that happens, it would be nice to be informed about it, however, so that we know what's going on. In any event, working title appeared on the latest Q&A livestream to demonstrate some of the upcoming improvements to the Garmin systems. 
One interesting point about all of this is that the new Garmin update will have an early access element. At this was mentioned that it will be arriving within a month or so, give or take a few weeks. I would assume that this would be accessible via the in-game marketplace, although precise details on that were not given. So how we're to access this early access system, I don't yet know, but hopefully we'll hear about that sooner rather than later. It's also completely possible that working title might make this early access available uh, in an entirely different fashion. Moving on to another topic then, Sobo discussed during the Q&A World Update 5, which will feature an overhaul to the Nordics. This includes five countries, Denmark, Sweden, Finland, Norway and Iceland. So as usual, World Updates include a whole load of new points of interest in fact, there are many of them for each of the five countries. In addition to the new points of interest, as, uh, there will be some new high-detailed airports as well. And of course, there will be uh, new terrain data. World Update 5 is currently set to release on either the 15th of June or the 29th of June. So, uh, fairly vague details at the moment on that, but on screen you can see a, uh, some preview screenshots of some of what we can expect to see. Now, Sobo were working on another plane. This is a prop plane, the Husky A1C. On screen right now, you can see some screenshots and it's looking really nice. The devs are aiming for an August release of this, although they can't talk too much about it. And from what they were saying, or they were hinting at at least, it appears as though this plane will come up with a new feature of some type. During the Q&A, chat also asked to what degree of realism the flight model will have for this plane. Now, I might be completely wrong on this, but I got the impression that Sobo didn't really want to go into that subject. However, the Microsoft Community Manager kind of pushed for an answer. So, Sobo did give a bit more of an answer. And the answer was that effectively, they're continuing to work on the flight model mechanics for Flight Simulator. And that all of these improvements will be rolled into all existing Sobo planes. Essentially then, the bottom line is that the new plane won't be study level. It's not necessarily a bad thing though, as it probably won't be priced at study level either, and will continue to get updates along the way. I'm definitely interested in seeing how this one plays out. The replay function of a Flight Simulator has been in development for a while now. Previously, Sobo have always said that it's in a prototype form only. They now said that replay is out of prototype and moving into production. There's no date on when this will arrive, but it's definitely one of my most anticipated features, as well as, well, for being so handy for video production. Again, not really any details on exactly how it will work, but I do know that Asobo want it to be a bit more than just basic replay functionality. Now, the subject of gliders. Microsoft Flight Simulator doesn't currently support gliders. Asobo have, however, made some progress in this area and have decided now to sign up a new partner for developing gliders. On the same note, Sobo will also be doing this for helicopters. So basically, uh, it's going to be a lot of work involved for creating a glider, for, uh, a glider flight model as well as the helicopter flight model, as well as everything else that goes along with it. Sobo probably feel they can't quite integrate all of this themselves, so they're outsourcing it. Helicopters are essentially a lot of hard work, as are gliders, they both need fl uh, fresh flight models. Bottom line then, both of these are coming and will be developed by a partner, much in the same way as the Garmin system is being worked on by Working Title. Now, through the rest of the Q&A, uh, Sobo spoke mostly about future content for uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator and the things they have planned for it. One of the subjects that come up was bridges. Bridges are currently in a bit of a weird place in that they are fully sub uh, solid objects. You can't actually fly underneath them unless, of course, you're flying around one of the handcrafted bridges. Most photogrammetry generated bridges uh, cannot be flown under as they're basically a solid block. And this is by nature of the photogrammetry creation. But Asobo are planning on changing the process for bridge creation. However, it's a part of a larger body of work, so it won't take place until some point in 2022. I said, Sobo are not really happy with the current implementation of bridges and are fully aware that they need to be improved. It's a bit of a similar story with water masks, and water masks are a bit of a touchy subject, I think. 
as they are a highly desired and very much enjoyed visual feature in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Uh, quite often, an area of beautiful water is shown in an official trailer, yet when people go to check the same area in Sim, the water is very plain. That's not to say there isn't some beautiful areas of water in Sim, because there are, I've seen them myself, and I've even shown them on video. But what is actually happening here with the trailers showing something that's not in the Sim, is that the trailers are from, from a more recent internal build. In short, all areas with these types of water masks are enabled by hand, and this has to be done on a one by one basis. The broader question then is whether or not this process can be automated in the future. Well, the short answer to that is yes. The longer answer is that it's dependent upon the quality of satellite data. Essentially then, the way it works is that any body of water in any region can have its opacity set. It can be set as clear as a Sobo wish, however, the issue here is the quality of the underwater terrain. It's no good making the water clear, for example, if the underwater features are not correct or of a high enough quality. It sounds as though this is something that will improve over time though, as a Sobo gather better sources of underwater data. It's something that is very much on their list, they say. Frame rates. We all know that there can be a bit of an issue there in many different places. One specific area where frame rates are frequently a problem is around airports, such as JFK, when you're in an airliner. Now, as long suspected, one of the main reasons for this is the glass cockpits. To fix this, Asobo have moved all calculations for the glass cockpits onto a separate CPU thread. This means that they should no longer impact performance in quite the same massive way that they currently do. Train streaming has also been improved, so whilst frame rates still drop on these occasions on internal builds, it will no longer be as bad as it was previously. Again, this is currently all on internal dev builds, but these changes will be rolled out over the next few updates. Historical weather is another topic that comes up quite often, and it's something that Asobo want to discuss. However, they are a little unsure or a little uncertain on what the request from the community is actually about. For example, does it mean historical weathers that's been recorded by a specific flight in the past? Or does it mean historical weather events? Asobo seem to want to give the community what they are asking for here, but first, and in order to need to do that, we really need to understand the request, so they've asked for simmers to leave details on the forums for exactly uh, what the community feels historical weather means. You can find the forums linked in the video description. So that then pretty much sums up all the information in the uh, latest Q&A, a lot of good information there I do feel. Uh, also looking forward to World Update 5, which really isn't too far away now. That then brings us to an end of this video. As always, thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys and girls next time.